I remember it happened a couple of days before I was supposed to race in the maple and poutine enduro. A couple of my hub and suspension bearings needed to get swapped. I didn't have the right tools. So I decided to improvise something. Oh man, that's when it all went wrong. How about you? Are you the kind of mountain biker who wants to get riding so bad that they're willing to do some sketchy stuff? Or are you just someone who likes to be really prepared? Well, me too. Hi, I'm Steve from Alt Alt, and I prefer to do things on my own schedule. Some people call me impatient, but sketchy stuff has happened. So that's exactly why I developed this. The Alt Alt Hub and Suspension Bearing Press system. I wanted to create a bearing press that was so versatile that the only reason I would need to buy another bearing tool is if I bought bike parts that required the use of a blind bearing puller. There are of course some unique scenarios that would require some special tools or sizes, but this system covers the majority of install and removal for hub, free hub, and suspension bearings. The reason it's so hard to design a tool to cover every scenario is that there's a lot of bike part diversity. Let's take free hubs for example. There are three main body shapes, HG, microspline, and XD or XDR. These two are quite similar. But that's just the outside shape of the body. Inside, it's a total free-for-all. The bearings can be all different sizes, and they can be installed into the free hub in different ways. In this free hub, they're installed one from each side. On this free hub, they're both installed from one side, the outboard side. There's even some free hubs that have three bearings all in from one side. And hub and suspension components are just as diverse. There's a bunch of different shape parts, the bearings are all different sizes, and the way the bearings sit in the parts is all different. So any tool that's going to be versatile enough to work on Hubs, free hubs, and suspension is going to have to be versatile as functionally speaking. I chose to design a bearing press because it works with a really controllable screwing motion and it's the one tool that you know you're going to need. Virtually all bearing installs are best done with a bearing press, so it's the go-to tool for home and shop mechanics. A bearing press can also do bearing removal, but it depends on the outer shape of your bike part. Whether it's for install, for removal, you need two things, access to press on the bearing and a leverage surface on the opposite side of the bike part. This surface needs to be flat, perpendicular to the bearing, and large enough to support the tool. If you don't have these two requirements, your manufacturer probably intends for your bearing to be removed with a punch and a hammer or a blind bearing puller. Here is a hub designed with what I like to call a BSB configuration. That's when you have two bearings separated by an internal spacer. This is common in hubs, free hubs, and suspension. There isn't full access to the backside of the bearing, so often a manufacturer will design the internal spacer to be pushed off to the side so that you can access a bit of the bearing to use a punch and a hammer to remove it. I don't like using a punch and a hammer because it works with a striking motion. And if you get the bearing cockeyed, you could damage the bearing seat. This is why I designed the alt drift, to press out that bearing in a controlled manner. It goes in, moves the spacer off to the side, presses against the back side of the bearing, and then with the leverage help of the bearing press, presses out the bearing. This is way more controllable. And here's another very common situation. Removing the first bearing in an over axle hub. 
Normally a manufacturer recommends whacking the axle with a hammer to knock out the axle and the first bearing. But if you don't do this very often, it's a little bit unnerving because you got to give it quite the strike to get it out. But thanks to the versatility of the Alt-Alt hub and suspension bearing press, the tool pieces can be configured to easily press out that axle and first bearing. Even sped up by 50%, you have to agree that this is a lot less stressful than bashing it out with a hammer. These two ways to remove bearings using a bearing press are essentially what the manufacturers recommend because they press and leverage against the same surfaces, only it's done in a more controlled manner. Oh yeah, and I designed self-centering into the system too. Many of the pieces in the system can be used to center the tool. The stop OAL centers the tool on the outboard side of the XD XDR free hubs. The stop center centers on any open hole. The sleeve long centers on the center mount brake interface. And the long pilots can be used for centering inside parts, such as the axle of an over axle hub. The long pilots can also be used to keep the center of the bearing aligned with the internal spacer of a BSB configuration. This way the spacer doesn't get cockeyed during install, as you can see in this free hub. And when you're working on small parts with such a long stud, there's an unnatural amount of this going on. So I've included a stud stop. Used instead of the non-tightening nut, it slides into place quickly, and then when squared up on the stud, it locks into place. You'll thank me later. And for those of you who want a little bit of convenience, there's an anodized aluminum handle. It's not necessary, but it's pretty sweet. That's a lot of capability. I know what you're thinking. What the functionality is this going to cost me, Steve? Well, I've designed this from the ground up to be less expensive. Any of the parts that didn't have to be made as strong as aluminum, I've made out of acetal. This is a strong engineering thermoplastic, and unlike aluminum, it doesn't need to be anodized. It's real gentle on bike parts, so it won't scratch. And also, the parts aren't even part marked. They're just kept convenient on this stand. This system has a lot of capability for a bearing press, but not everybody's gonna need the whole thing. So I'm gonna split it up into more manageable kits. This is the whole system. And this is how it's all split up into kits and parts. If you're a small shop, this is what you're going to need for the whole system. But if you're a home mechanic, you won't need all the over axle drifts. So you can get those individually by size in a kit containing a long and a short over axle drift. That handle isn't totally necessary or bare bones, so it's sold separately. And because not everybody is gonna need the alt drift, it's sold separately as a kit, but it comes in two versions. The alt D1 kit contains the alt drifts and the alt rod, but it needs to be used with the other parts in the HSBP-1 or the original suspension bearing press while the Alt-D-2 is a totally standalone kit which contains all the parts that you're going to need to remove the first bearing in a BSB configuration. This kit is for those of you who already have other bearing presses. If you already have the original suspension bearing press and want to upgrade to be able to work on hubs, you can expand the suspension bearing press with the HSBP-1X. This is an expansion kit. It contains everything to change the suspension bearing press kit to the HSBP-1 main kit, but doesn't include the stud stop. Many customers who originally got the suspension bearing press already purchased the stud stop. So the stud stop is sold separately. If you want a more in-depth look at the system, watch my explained video. Then check out the how-to section of altalt.ca for some bearing basics. And finally, take a look at the instructional diagrams to find out how to put all the tool pieces together for a bunch of different situations. 
If you're interested in buying an extremely versatile, bare bones, inexpensive, hub, free hub, and suspension bearing press system, then head on over to the buy section of altalt.ca. P.S. Watch Instagram for product notifications and check out the Alt Alt YouTube channel for some upcoming videos where I'll be doing a bunch of bearing swaps and sharing some tips. Happy wrenching!